Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're taking a look at a British Trials sniper rifle. This is an L8T. It is essentially a number 4 Enfield converted to 308 and fitted with a number 32 telescopic sight. This is in effect a number 4 Mark 1T sniper converted to 762 NATO. Now this was an outgrowth of the L8 rifle program. I already did a video on the standard L8 rifle, so if you're not familiar with that, definitely check that other video out. The idea was basically to convert existing 303 number 4 Enfields to 762 NATO so they could be issued to, say, the territorial troops or kept in reserves. Um, ultimately the plan didn't really work out because by the time things really got going there wasn't much need for it any, anymore. It took almost 10 years for the program to, well, to get to this stage at least. So um, they did do a really good job converting the box magazines to run 7.62 NATO, and that would be helpful for what this eventually turned into. With this particular rifle what we have is one of a batch of six rifles that were in 303 calibre in uh, 1964, and they were uh, test fired for accuracy. Um, I'm sorry, these were number 4 T sniper rifles, test fired for accuracy with their iron sights, then converted to 7.62 NATO, fitted with number 32 scopes, and retested again to get an idea of what the accuracy would be like on one of these L8Ts. So uh, let me show you the details up close, and then we'll talk about how that accuracy testing actually went. If you saw my previous video on the L8 conversion, then there's not a whole lot really to show you here. Um, if you didn't, in a, the, the short version is they had to replace the magazine, and this required a substantial number of modifications. So because the 7.62 NATO cartridge uh, is rimless, and it's shorter than the 303, uh, there was a new follower that had to be made. They actually moved the ejector to the rear lip of the magazine, uh, rather than try and fit a new ejector in the rifle. Uh, it's got a more square profile than the 303, just because since it's rimless, the rounds stack straighter rather than coming in staggered like the, the rimmed 303 rounds. So quite a lot of development here. They then of course modified the bolt head, uh, they put in a new barrel, obviously a 7.62 caliber barrel. This was not formally uh, designated an L8T, although that was the basic program that this test was involved in. This was still a number 4 Mark 1T with its original markings on the receiver socket here, M47C, uh, code designation, it's a 1945 rifle, and the serial number is V37975. And uh, that serial number is actually recorded. Uh, there's a book about uh, British sniper rifles, a little, little short pamphlet written by uh, Peter Laidler and Ian Skennerton, and it calls out the, the specific rifles that were in this accuracy trial, and this is one of them. The scope that was fitted is a, uh, a number 32 Mark III scope. These were originally designed for the Bren gun, in fact. Um, they were never actually used on the Bren gun, um, and there was never actually any trial with the original number 4T with any scope other than this one. Uh, it was kind of accepted and just uh, taken for granted that that's the scope they would use. So if you're interested in more detail about the original 303 caliber snipers, I have a video on those, so you should check that one out. The idea here seems really quite sound, like what could go wrong? Well, what could go wrong was accuracy. The problem was with 7.62 NATO you had a lighter, faster bullet with different harmonics that interacted differently with the stock and the barrel bands, and this, this ain't free-floated. Uh, and while they had been able to get pretty good accuracy out of the 303 version, they could not get anything, they couldn't improve on it with 7.62. They had a hard time actually matching the accuracy of the 303 rifles, and the whole time the goal was to get something substantially better, and this rifle was just unable to do it. Um, as it turned out, these rifles in this configuration with the scopes in 7.62 with a full stock were able to get about two and a half minute of angle as a general rule. Some were a little better, some were some were actually a lot worse, potentially. But these rifles with scopes in the testing just barely shot better than their 303 counterparts with iron sights. Now the sighting systems don't fundamentally make the rifle more or less accurate, but you would certainly think it would be easier to get a good group at longer range uh, with the optic than with iron sights. And they did, but just barely. Um, ultimately these 
these would have been suitable as a World War II era designated marksman's rifle. They were absolutely not suitable for a Cold War era true sniper rifle, and that's what the British wanted. Now ultimately they would get that with the L42A1, and what the, while the British government is, is having dismal results testing these, there are civilian shooters over on the British NRA Bisley ranges competing with what seems to be the same thing. They're using 7.62 converted number 4 rifles, but they're doing it with heavy barrels and they're free-floating the barrels by getting rid of all this extra furniture at the front. And the British government, five years after this, so this testing was done in 64 and 65, it wouldn't be until about 1970 that they would come back with the L42, originally XL42 program, and say, what if we cut off the furniture and free float it? What would that work? And that did work. So I also have a video on uh, the L42A1, so if you'd like to see where this program, what this led to, uh, definitely check that video out. In the meantime, um, hopefully you enjoyed this one. This is one of six rifles that were used in that original uh, British accuracy test, so very cool to get a chance to look at one of them uh, still here and intact. Thanks for watching.